bait there behind my house. Yeah. So I'll go and check it now when I go back to my door. If you want, you can even go hunt for trade from here. Hunt for bush pastures or something like that. Yeah. Did you see my list? Yeah, okay. okay. I'll talk there. This one's a little bit quieter. A little bit. See that heart is good for you? You mean shoot one of the paper targets and see where we are? Yeah, let's just see the line. One hole in this Top one. left, bottom left and bottom right open. Which one you want to go for? Big baits here, pretty nasty, nasty mess, but that's what it takes to attract them, so we'll find one, either at this spot or another spot. <laughs> I'll never forget, he told us this is the honeydew plant, <laughs> you gotta try this. <laughs> It's, this is early morning of our first full day on safari here and we're hunting a blue diker in a very interesting area here, this very thick bush and in the open areas are, are pineapple fields. So we've got, a, we've got the hounds and uh, here we go. Towards us or go this way. Yeah. Okay. Now look they'll see us, so they it won't run towards you, but they normally come out there. Then cut this way. Yeah, but they often come out and they stand and look at you. Okay. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting our plan all sorted out. This is really cool. It's a beautiful place here. Very dense. It's where these blue dockers live and this super thick stuff. So we're gonna hope that the dogs get on one and, and bring it this way. Yo bloody bull! Yo bloody <laughs> No, it was no chance, no time to... I know, you, I can't tell. <laughs> cut the noise on that one. Yeah. <laughs> well then, folks. Thank you very much. You should have been swearing at you. <laughs> bloody fool. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be very quick or nothing's gonna happen on this deal. Come on! Come on! <laughs> did you feel the push? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if I did wrong, I did wrong, but I, I pushed you, let me shoot. <laughs> Maybe I did subconsciously, but it uh I was like, there it is, I've gotta get to the next opening and get in front of it, and I still was First morning of our safari here, 
and we got to hunt this really really thick thick stuff down in here where the blue dockers live and this the uh, these little areas are so dense like if the cloud comes over during the day it's almost dark in here and I uh, getting some dogs to run through here and try to chase one up and we were able to get a shot and I'm thankful for the the team here helping me this is my second go round for blue diker so uh, they're very very tough animals and a, a hard-earned trophy I'm just really um, can't say enough about this opportunity to hunt this cool animal here in South Africa be in the Eastern Cape. There I'm so excited. A beautiful male. Well wow. Done. We have stopped these things around and around on this beautiful country and finally got one and got the old one that we were yeah. after. That's no, a good old male. Good one to take. <sighs> Appreciate all the hard work. No, it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. <laughs> yep, maybe we should have brought the smaller gun. <laughs> Getting the chance to hunt this Orby in the Eastern Cape is a bit of a dream come true. It's number eight of the tiny 10 for me. But more importantly is getting to come here and learn of the conservation success story that this animal has been. Uh, just in this conservancy here, uh, back in the mid 90s, they figured they had a couple hundred of these animals and now they have over 600. They've been diligent about their management and primarily predator control, which of course is a sheep man is something I know a little bit about. And it's also a place where I'm sometimes at odds with biologists who seem to never understand the value of predator control. Well, this, uh, this amazing herd of animals here in the Eastern Cape is, is a living proof of predator control and how it can help conserve a species. All right. This is our third day of hunting and uh, we had a fantastic day yesterday got two of the tinies down in the morning uh -huh. and then we had a, a beautiful evening of, of uh, hunting and seeing quite a few Inyala and even giraffe and um, kudu and impala and I don't know what else we saw but we saw quite a bit of game so that was a lot of fun especially getting to see those Inyala bulls which is one of the things we're after so getting the, getting to spend some time glassing those ones and of course they weren't big enough but uh, that was really a lot of fun and as you can see it's a, a beautiful cool morning here and We've got the day ahead of us, and so I suppose we're gonna go to a few glassing points and yeah. see what we can find. Yeah, this morning we're after some bush buck, so a bit of overcast weather has moved in on us. Uh, we're up here in the mountains. We're hopefully gonna get a ram coming out to get some feed. <coughs> and while we're busy, I'll be also gonna look down into the bottoms and look for some nyala. So let's see what we can make happen today. Well, I'm excited, so here we go. We're gonna go see what's next. Yeah, let's do it.
that was some extreme shooting and this wind is, is kind of crazy and it's so far downhill there. I'm surprised you even saw him. It's dark and he's in a dark spot down there. It's a cool looking old bush buck and I hit him and then he was still kind of moving and I shot again and somehow I, I missed him but then he's he's down so. Well done, that is good shooting. This wind is pumping so. Yeah, it's hard to even stand up up here. Yeah. Even with the quad sticks, it's like hard to keep your balance. <laughs> Good shooting, well done. Dropped him in his tracks. Oh, they're so clever, Joe. They just live in this thick stuff and they yeah. hardly and he's not gonna come out with this wind, I'll tell uh, you that. Definitely not. He's gonna hunker up down there. Yeah. He, that was exciting. It happened so fast. I mean we've been seeing females and stuff off and on and then yellow females and seeing all kinds of other game, but then the one we're after, it's getting dark and the wind's blowing and the cold front's coming in and and just you just got you just Man, I don't know how you spotted him, but that was fantastic. Uh, well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
Well, it's cold and windy this morning and we've located a couple of sable way on top of the hill here. So we're fixing to make a climb. We've got the wind right. Yeah. And we know they're up there. They're bedded. So it's going to be a little tricky getting up there without them seeing us and getting them to move out of the thick stuff where they're bedded trying to stay out of this wind. So we're fixing to get to climb. We're fixing to warm up because we're fixing to go straight uphill here. Yeah, no, it'll be a good hunt. Obviously they going to be alert up on top there. Um, but it's going to be a good climb. And as you said, we're going to warm up pretty good now getting that altitude there. <laughs> It's quite windy, but let's, we got the wind in our favor, so that's a good thing. We can just get up there and stay in, stay out of their sight until we can get to where, where we need to be. Let's do it. Let's go. get some more that was a, those last two were absolutely were in them where they needed to be think he is down Philip just walk in front of us okay. just in case he does charge I think he's pretty much well done Philip I guess I should have brought the 375 <laughs> yeah the yeah, thing's full tough. of lead your first shot was a brilliant shot perfect in the heart lung area but he just carried on. He just absorbing lead. Yeah. But yeah, it's amazing we were able to get up in here and get on him in all this wind. I didn't know <laughs> what he was gonna be doing, but then he busted us the first time and then yeah. he ran away and I just figured he was gonna be gone. But then here he is, you put up the sticks and we got the first shot in him and got him slowed down and then we just had to keep shooting. <laughs> now, a lot of times I always tell the guys, you know, number one job is to get the animal down as quickly as possible. So even if he's dead just put another insurance in him because obviously as hunters we need to yes. be as ethical as possible and there's absolutely you can always cut the lead out of the meat but <laughs> just to get him down as quick as possible but you had absolutely great shooting there Philip well done that was that was a tough hunt and in a beautiful place with this scenery it's just absolutely amazing so yeah getting a chance to get a sable man it's just a dream come true yeah. appreciate everything oh, well done that's something again Look at that one on the back. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Yes. I've never seen a sable this time. <laughs> Look at this big boy. Oh. oh, he's still kicking. You know, hunting in the wind can be a real challenge. Some days you just want to throw your hands up and go home and, and do something else because the wind can, can be so troublesome. But uh, today we just stuck with it and climbed up this mountain. We were able to spot this sable bedded down and we got up in there and I guess uh, he got up to graze a little bit and he saw us, but he didn't really know what we were and he kind of ran off, but he didn't run off too far. And we were able to get, get back over this direction and, and get a shot on him. And uh, boy, these things are tough. You know, they say you, you need a big gun in Africa. Well, I'm uh, living proof here today of that. You, shooting this thing several times with a 300 Winchester and still uh, struggling to get him put down on the ground. So it was quite a challenge. Uh, the, the weather's been a challenge here. Getting up this mountainside was quite a challenge. Uh, but a real dream come true when it comes to getting a sable like this. Uh, a big old mature sable bull and, and then getting to do it here in this beautiful country and, and in these challenging conditions as well. Right shooting. <laughs> well done, 400 yards. Damn it. <laughs> well, one big bird just went down. <laughs> oh, and uh, drumsticks are on the thing tonight. On the bry. Yeah. Whew. I didn't think they were ever going to stop. They started running, and I mean, they were just moving. Yes. And then they just, well, it never did stop. He was still walking when I shot. Yeah. But he slowed down, and he was fixing to go behind a yeah. bush there, and I thought, this is it. Let's. Try to shoot the one that's, you know, three of them were in line there. So I tried to get the one that wasn't in line, so I didn't want yeah. to shoot two at once or something crazy like that. And so 
Well, that worked out. <laughs> you want another one? And you're running at about 100 miles an hour. <laughs> no, I think we better we better stop with that. Let's go load Big Bird. There we go. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. You can see on his legs, he's starting to go that orange color. Yeah. Here on his beak. Back in the 1800s, if you had one of these birds, you could sell some of those white feathers. You could buy yourself a new property. <laughs> More valuable than gold. Wow. That's amazing. Well, shooting something on off sticks at 380 yards isn't easy, but luckily there wasn't too much wind and got a good solid setup on the sticks there. And and just made it happen, so. Well, it was about midday. We were hunting in Yala this morning up in the mountains, climbed up a big mountain and glassed all morning and didn't find anything. And so we were kind of heading back and saw some ostriches and they weren't at a thousand yards or 1200 yards or whatever we've been seeing them at. But uh, they were about 250 or so and we got out and got the sticks and thought, well, let's just see. And they were running and the last time I ranged them, they were about 375, but we figured it was about 410 when I actually shot, and they never did stop. They slowed down enough that I could get a shot, and we got a little bit of a wind, so I had to, had to kind of take that into consideration, but, but yeah, 410 yards is what we figured is back to the road where we were, so that's, for me, that's pretty good shooting. Fred, you asked me, I think we had a conversation yesterday about what in southern Africa I had not hunted and so I couldn't think of very many there's a few obviously some of the ones we're after but uh, the ostrich came up I said yeah to come to think of it I've never hunted an ostrich and so what a challenging way and what a beautiful day to to be able to have this opportunity I mean they were there hasn't been any of these that within really five or six hundred yards of us and we finally found some that were about 300 and then by the time we got ready to take a shot, it was a little over 400. So yeah. there's nothing easy about uh, hunting an ostrich. They they just have that eyesight. I guess they could probably see you from a mile. Yeah, I know. The other thing about an ostrich, you always have a joke. An ostrich grazes or browses at 40 miles an hour because as soon as they see you, they are gone. I mean, they can <laughs> spot a tick on a horse's ass at a mile, like you said, and <laughs> see them at a thousand yards and are already practicing for a marathon. Oh, it, great shooting, very, very well done. Well, very fortunate. What a beautiful day and, and just enjoying this time here with you in Africa. Glad you're enjoying it. That's the number one. Absolutely. Thanks. Get up to the top of those rocks. On those rocks. You can see this way and that way too. Yeah. It's a little bit of a climb, but it could definitely yeah. be worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. Depending on which way we go. Another day looking for an Inyala, so... The next plan is to go up on top of those rocks, up on this hill, sit there in glass and see what we can find. So warm day today, the animals aren't gonna be moving much. So we've gotta get up there and get our binos and look this whole valley over. So here we go. We made it to the top of the mountain. And here we're going to sit until it cools off and animals start moving. So we've got a vantage point that covers half the property here probably. So however far we can see, if something shows up, we can decide whether we need to go back down the mountain and go after it or not. So anyway, in the meantime, there's a beautiful view to enjoy. Well done, dropped him in his tracks there. I saw him flop over. Okay. 
That's finished. Yeah. That was on the shoulder. Well done. <laughs> 305 yards. Yep. That first shot put him down, but just for that insurance. Well done. He ain't going. Any, he's not going anywhere now. Yes, and we spotted him all the way. On top of that, right there on those rocks. That's where we first saw him was from on top of this mountain over here. Had to work our way all the way around and it's getting dark and he's of course in the thickest stuff yeah, yeah. right there and then all you could just barely see him. And uh, this is what we had to do. We're running out of daylight and uh, able to get a shot off. Whew, that's a long shot, 305 yards. <laughs> yes, <a> great shooting. <laughs> so you're nice and comfortable off the sticks. Yeah, yeah, this was good. It was just slipping a little bit. Yeah. And so once you stood on it, I think everything was fine. But yeah, sitting down, you get a little more ground contact. It's a little yeah. bit better. So, so yeah, we'll have to make our way back over there, <laughs> all the way over there, and then get yeah, on him. Dip that caught us. Yeah. The got stuck. Yeah, we got stuck getting here though, <laughs> in the bad place in the dam down here, and oh, we, I didn't know if we were getting out of there. Well, luckily there was two of you guys to help push. So. <laughs> Well, we'll see if we can get back across that and back over there and get over there before it gets dark. Well, we found him. It wasn't easy. This was a trek just getting from where we shot to over here. It's 300 yards, but you can't come straight. You can't get across this draw. You have to go through the thick stuff and make a full horseshoe circle around all this and finally get over here. And as you can see, the sun's going down, but what an end to another beautiful day here in South Africa. Well we've been about, we're about halfway through this safari and we've been pretty much hunting in Yala off and on the whole time so it hasn't been easy. We've climbed many many mountains here uh, to find one of these and we found plenty but we're always looking for the right one and so we were able to get get on one today right before the sun was going down and I'm really fortunate to, to get to hunt in Yala here in the Eastern Cape and and with this, uh, makes me all the way complete now with the Africa 29. So another milestone uh, for me. And so a really special day here. And just want to thank everybody that's, that's helped me along the way. So this has been a, just a beautiful day in a beautiful place. And what a proper ending to, to this difficult hunt. Well, the sun's just coming up this morning. And we've got the houndsman here with a pack of hounds that are gonna go hunt a bush pig today. So I've hunted bush pigs before and not had much success. And so we're gonna go give it a try with a guy that knows this place and has some really good dogs. And so we've got a bait pile down here and, and uh, fixing to go. As you can see, this is really thick. So it's gonna be interesting uh, trying to keep up with the dogs today. something. Guys, <clears throat> ready? Yeah. Come on. Hey. Do you really? Put it down. Okay. On the shoulder. On the shoulder? Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm good. I'm watching. Right, right. Hey, what's up, Gwena? What's up? Right, right. Good. Okay. 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 Right. Right. Wait. Right. 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 Right.
Three lines? No shells. No bullets? Okay, I'm gonna have to shoot the other gun then. Okay. Let's just go forward. Make sure your gun is safe. Wait. Hi. Shoot him. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Zack, Zack. Zack, Zack. Zack, Zack. Zack, Zack. Okay, wait. Shoot him. Yes, hold on. Go forward. Well done. Daniel Eister. Set my man. This thing didn't want to die. The dogs have got another pig. No, I'll be the man in your bushes. What does this one look like? Very nice, very boring. You see them, they pull the pound down and they get up, get up, get up. Hey, Pete! I see a pound down and they get up. I'm good. Well done, old boy. I'm good with this one. Sure? Yeah. You wanna drink the other one for yourself? Can you give your gun? Can you give your gun? Up. Well done. Thank you very much. So you get your exercise in for the morning. <laughs> I thought only my boy was running track today. <laughs> yeah, we ran a couple of miles to get up here, some of it straight uphill, and I was telling Fred, I think maybe hunting bush pig from the blind is looking more appealing. Whew! Two bush pigs down this morning. But what a, what a challenge getting up here. We're halfway up the mountain right here. All through all these thorns and brambles getting up here and rocks and whoo what a story well done. <laughs> <coughs> i need a breather yeah, i was sitting like sitting down there yeah, what do you think david we've had an exciting morning here and it's a lot of fun to see your dogs work and i've got the chance to hunt with hounds a few times and uh, on a leopard and a and a caracal and a mountain lion in the States. And uh, it's always a real pleasure for me to work with somebody as talented as you and with, with a pack of hounds that knows what they're doing. I mean, they just uh, get right on these pigs and, and, and take off until they get them stopped somewhere. And it may be a while before they get them stopped, but they're not gonna give up. So tell us a little bit about your, uh, what you do with these hounds and how long you've been doing it. Well, uh, my old man started off hunting first, um, as, soon as, I, as soon as I could walk and run, started off with him. And then just later on in life, him, I got old and gave up and we carried on. And he started off hunting for the, all the pine for farmers. Uh, the pigs do damage in the pines. Mm -hmm. Mainly sheep sometimes, they catch sheep. Right. And that's where we started off and <coughs> we've carried on from there. But what we normally do is when we go to where they've been damaging, we farm our phone in the week and we go and hunt on the weekends. Mm -hmm. We go on early Saturday morning, first light. We'll walk around the land, find where they've eaten and try and find the tracks going out, which is much easier then, then you put, put the dogs on there. Mm -hmm. And they'll work, the same, you'll, put, you'll have your older dogs, more trained dogs, which are probably three, four years old, and you put them on from there, and they put a worker's poor to where the pigs sleep, where they sleep in the daytime, mm -hmm. get to there, and then normally they will bark a couple of times the nest, depending how cheeky the pigs are, and then they'll take out one, mm -hmm. and then we'll have like our chasing dogs, or the younger dogs that we're still training, and we let them go and they'll fall in behind those dogs. Chase it, it depends how quickly they can turn the pig. And then as soon as he's tired, you stand. And then you've got to get this as fast as possible to try and shoot before it hurts one of the dogs. For sure, for sure. And then we've got to go try and find where the nest was, where they spayed mm -hmm. the first time. And then we'll find the next one from there. So that's how it goes. Well, I find it interesting that, you know, you do a lot of your work on crop and livestock damage, you know, for the farmers yes. around here. <clears throat> so that's a lot of what you do. And then on occasion you come up and, and go with one of us that's yes. trying to get a big one. Yeah, no, 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 that is true. That is true, it's all done. It's very exciting when you guys come. 
it is a bit teeth holding when we've got to stand back and watch it. <laughs> but um, it's very, very fu- nice and fun. So others wouldn't be doing it if you've been up long ago. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's been quite a morning and I think we got our exercise for the day and I appreciate everything. No, well, congratulations on two pigs, two very nice pigs, boy in the south. Very good, thank you so much. 90%. Fred, these bush pigs are hard to hunt. I've hunted them a few times, and uh, whew, hasn't had, I haven't had much luck. And so it was a lot of fun today to get the, the hounds in here and, and chase these guys, and whew, what a chase it was. What do you think? Now, you remember a few days ago I said if you want to have a, an exciting hunt, it's gonna obviously be the bush pigs. If you wanna have a good marathon hunt, it's gonna be with the hounds. <laughs> so we normally hunt them over bait or with hounds, and we got David in today, and. You know, his dogs, I've never seen dogs work as disciplined as his. Took the track, went straight away, and within two hours, two and a half hours, we had both boy and sow down. And as you could see, running through this brush here, it doesn't make it easy. It uh, hits the lungs hard, so it's, yeah, it's I don't know a memorable how, hunt. I don't know how far we went, but I'm still huffing and puffing. But it was well worth it to be able to get two this morning and to get to see this beautiful country and go up this... Uh, draw up here to these fountains and, and see all those big yellowwood trees. That was pretty amazing, so. I mean, we've got a very nice old boar, a lot of scarring on his face and a very old sow. It's the ones that you want, you know. With the, with the hounds, you can't always choose what to get. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, sometimes they may bay up a, a younger pig. Obviously, you got to get, you got to shoot it as quick as possible. David did say he can call the hounds off. I see one of the hounds does have a little bit of a scar, but yeah. every sport has its injuries, so you've got to get there quick. So. These razor blades that they have as teeth yeah. don't cut them up too bad and I think we've had a very, very good day. It's beautiful, beautiful borders and well done. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Gnarly looking head, I'll tell you. Francis for hunting. And I tell the guys, they can only shoot a javelina. Some people love to get dogs after them in Texas. That's a big... some golden wildebeest here. Raining straight down, but we're gonna put a stalk on. On the right, see so there's a small, medium, and large. Right way on the right. Whoa, 
Well done. <laughs> I got the one. <laughs> oh, Lelepa. Well done for brilliant shooting. This, this wind and this rain makes it difficult for us, but good for the stalking. Yeah, you can get a little closer, but <laughs> then you can't see anything. It's raining straight down here. Well, I'm glad you're getting some rain here, but man, it, it makes it tough. It makes it tough to to get on them and, and uh, make the right shot and make sure your optics are working and <laughs> see through the glass. <laughs> We're cleaning our, I've got my binos inside my jacket here. Oh, I should also do that. <laughs> my goodness. Well done. Interesting, interesting day. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. <laughs> We've had a fantastic hunt here today. It's always interesting. You never know what's going to happen when you're out in the country uh, hunting. And today is a rainy day. So we've been dry the whole time we've been here. And today some weather's blown in and made things a little difficult. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. Some beautiful country as always and uh, getting the chance to hunt a new animal here for me, a golden wildebeest, and, and to be able to find one that's this old. I mean, this thing is a very old bull. His teeth are worn down, and he was the, the one we were after, and just fortunate to, to get in there and, and uh, be able to put a stalk on and get, get in the right place at the right time. They're very wary and certainly get away from you, but it's fun to watch them and hear the noises they make, and see them run around and chase each other and anyway the wildebeest is uh, for me it's just a one of those iconic animals of Africa and getting to hunt a golden one it's just this animal is just indescribably beautiful and so this has been oh just just an experience a real experience um, but it hasn't been without its difficulties but uh, I'm just uh, don't know what to say is a beautiful animal and we're just having a great time here with some great people and and uh, we're going to try to load this big monster. <laughs> I've never seen one this big. We're going to try to see if we can load this thing and head down the road. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
stumbling down. Well done. Yes, you brilliant shooting. Woo! <laughs> there was no time to dial on that one. We just had to hold over and try to make the shot. Woo! <laughs> that got me nervous. <laughs> I don't know why I got really nervous on that one. Man. Nice good stalk yet through the brush, but a real good eye sign. Well, there's so many eyes on us on this one. There's just a huge herd yeah. of, of impala there. My goodness. I don't know how many eyes were on us right there, but there was a bunch. And we didn't have very long and yeah. just had to take a shot and then make sure we didn't <laughs> shoot through one and hit another one or something. I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah. Whew. Had a nice gap there. It turned out well. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's where it came out. I guess because we got a hold of it. I don't know why that doesn't look strange. This is a white flanked impala. And after hunting them today, I think it might should be renamed the mountain impala. These things are up here in the rocks and, and rough stuff. And uh, we couldn't get very close to them. Big group and a lot of eyes. And uh, we're able to get a shot on this ram it was about 240 yards. And one shot, he, he ran though. He ran like the 300 hadn't hit him and ran up in these rocks. And we came over here and then it was kind of hard to find him because <laughs> kind of blends in with some of these rocks here. So uh, exciting, exciting morning here uh, hunting in South Africa. Some very tricky impala. Wind swirled, changed directions on us. I think they smelled us and they've headed up these hills. So we'll see. We're in pursuit. Can you see me standing broadside? Just reload. Going down, going down. Are you sure? Yeah, 100% positive. Yes, see, that's a nice ram neck. Damn it. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, I mean. Talk I, about it, a long stalk, eh? Yeah, through the gorges and everything here. And the, not to mention the river run area here with all that. Jungle vines. <laughs> Some good thorns there. And then about a 250 yard shot and then we get up here and then there's several pretty good ones. Yeah. So then we had to kind of see, well, what's one? And then it's kind of hard to, sh it's, you know, some of these distances and it's kind of overcast yeah. today. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell which one you're supposed to be going after. Big problem is also they are in the brush. So they, the horns are in the brush and. They just fade out yeah. into the brush. You can't see the horns. But, uh. But yeah, the shot felt good, but then I didn't, I don't know, I didn't hear a good contact. And I was like, ah, oh. but he's down up there and we just got a little more climbing to do. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Oh, goodness. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, long horns. Very long horns. Ooh -wee. Very Incredible. Fun. Look at the horns on this thing. Well done. Well, thanks very much, Frederick. This one was. We earned this one. Properly. <laughs> I can hardly get up here. Oh my goodness. Up and down and up and down and through the river around areas and then 250 yard shot and got the job done. So, whew, I'm out of gas. <laughs> it's amazing at how much these animals can stick away or hunker down when it's raining, but as soon as the rain lifted a bit, man, they would spot us from yeah. seven, 800 yards and take yeah. off. That's what surprises me all the time. It's like we were, like you say, seven or 800 yards from one group and there's one female, she's got us busted on us. already. And she's fixing to take the group with her. So you got to work hard for these animals. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to get to see the variety here in South Africa. You know, I just, uh, it's just unbelievable. It really is. So tribute to all the management and what people have done here. Incredible. And this is getting a little bit of rain, so times are getting better. Exactly. <laughs> Plants are coming back, so yeah. thank you guys very much. Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one, man, those horns. Yeah, nice Definitely stuff. bigger than that other one. Definitely. Yeah. Once you get up close. Are... One thing I always enjoy about visiting here in South Africa is the scenery. And uh, boy, have we had one of those days today. Just an incredible scenery. Started off raining this morning and we've all been pretty wet and uh, found some challenging animals to hunt here. And this probably takes the cake, I'm telling you. This is one of the toughest ones we've hunted. We've been up and down these hills and uh, busted by the wind, swirling and changing directions, and uh, this one was a pretty long shot, about 250 yards, but everything came together, and uh, beautiful animals and beautiful scenery, and uh, what more could you ask for? I've been hunting for an old Inyala this whole trip. We uh, were fortunate to get one earlier on and as the days are winding down, we thought 
maybe we're going to just keep glassing and if the opportunity presents itself and we find a particularly old one, then we might take it. Well, here we are on the last day of the hunt um, here in the morning and we have been, as usual, all over uh, climbing and uh, glassing and we were actually just kind of running down the road and we all saw this in Yala and uh, Hanku saw it first and then we all looked at it and it, the color, he's old and the color's off and so we didn't really know what it was. It took a minute and, uh, to figure out what we were looking at and then when we saw the horns we were like, we better get set. And so it was a 400 yard shot and some wind to deal with and I did hold a little bit for the wind and, and made a good shot. We just didn't hear any major thump, but I guess that was because it was so far. But I'm really fortunate to, to get a chance to, to get an animal that's this old. You can see the hair is, is rough and the color's off. So this is one of those ones you're really proud of taking. It's been a great day, it's been a great safari. Barry, we're getting to the end of our safari here. Uh, it's been great to be here and to get to, to bring a group of hunters on their first safari. And for me to get to share that ex experience with them and, and especially to bring them back to the place where I had my first safari many, many years ago with you. Yes. And so it's, it's been a, uh, a very fun trip. It's been uh, amazing to see um, this property again and to see all the things that have happened over the years and and to get to spend time with you and your family. Um, the animals have been incredible, the scenery is incredible and we've just enjoyed uh, every, every bit of it. But uh, I wondered if you could have some memories of my safari 24 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember a lot about your first safari. Uh, you were very, very excited to come on your first safari <laughs> here with uh, Greg Sims yes. and uh, Clint Groff. Yes. And uh, I don't remember Brown was here. Yes, Brown he, he was here. here. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, for me it's always very exciting having clients on their first safari because they don't really know what to expect. Right. There's also a lot of nervousness getting mm -hmm. in and out of the country. Mm -hmm. What problems are they going to have? Mm -hmm. And uh, when they get to the lodge or they're going to have enough food to eat <laughs> but they're going to be comfortable can they have warm water right so there's a lot of uh, nervousness involved on the client's first safari and once they get out and see all the different animals then uh, it's very exciting and uh, i remember with you as well <laughs> the first morning we went out first we went to the rifle range and yes then we went and did some glassing and stalking Absolutely. I, I do remember it. I remember everything about that trip. I even remember some conversations that we had and with some of the other folks there and, and my other hunting companions. But I was very fortunate to get to do that. I was 25 years old, I believe. And, mm. and to get to do that, it really was a, a big life changer for me, getting to go hunt and go on a safari. Mm. And also, of course, to see the Dorper sheep here in <laughs> South Africa in the Eastern Cape. And so that was a big game changer for me and, uh, you know, changed the direction of my life, you know, after that trip. So, so I just wanted to share that with other people. And so I've found that there's a lot of folks that would like to come here and go on safari, but they're very unsure of all the logistics and things. And so yes. it's just been fun for me to help to put that, that sort of thing together and answer people's questions and, uh, and get to share what we love, uh, hunting over here in, in Africa. And so that, that's been fun for me. And I've just uh, enjoyed this trip uh, as much as any, I'll yeah. tell you. It's been great, really has. Yeah. Quite a funny story from your first safari. Uh, we were hunting Gemsbuck <laughs> and we were hunting a two on one with your friend. Yes. I won't mention names. <laughs> and uh, uh, your friend shot and he missed. Yes. And then I asked you to shoot it because it was a real good one. Yes. And you <laughs> shot it and it went down. <laughs> and when you got up to the Gemsbuck, 
and he saw what a beautiful big Gensberg it was. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to claim it. <laughs> yes, there was some jealousy there, you know. Yeah, doing the two-on-one hunting, uh, I don't know about that sometimes. But yeah, it was, uh, uh, it, it's a good memory and I remember that day and we traveled a long ways to go after those big Gensberg yes. and it was a lot of fun. Yes, well, yeah. well, Barry, it's been it's been fun to share some memories here yes. and to to visit about everything and reminisce. And yes. I'm going to be very fortunate to get to bring another group next yes, year. Yes, I look forward to it. Um, and uh, Philip, I also want to say thank you so much for all your hard work in putting all the clients together yes. on behalf of myself and all of our staff. We really, really appreciate it. And the guys you put together, the Texans, they're such a lot of fun. You know, you we always make good friends. With <laughs> Absolutely, they have been a fun group, and it's it's really been my pleasure, Barry. And yes. I look forward to doing this again real yes, soon. Super, thank you very much. Thank you. And I look forward uh, to next year, Jennifer coming. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's a it's a plan. Yes, yes.